we age because we lose hormones. We don't lose hormones because we age. So that's really positive. And we could all do things every day at any age that can balance our hormones better naturally. And it's up to us as women to put ourselves first and do self-care. Welcome to the Betty Rocker Show, the place to be to nourish your mind, love your body, and rock your life. What's up, rock stars? Welcome back to the show. It is great to have you here. Our guest today is Dr. Gallery Rocco, who is also known as the Wellness Warrior. She's a double board certified medical doctor and expert in hormone health who has been practicing for over 20 years and is passionate about helping everyone feel their best as they age. She wrote the book, Growing Younger, Restore Your Hormones, Energy, and Sex Drive. And the title really well explains the focus of her practice, which is to arm your body with regenerative tools to help slow down the aging and disease process. She's got some great information and tools to help us at any age to maintain a healthy hormone balance as we go through time. So join me in welcoming her to the show. Dr. Gowry Rocco, welcome to the show. It's such a treat to have you here today. Thank you so much for coming. My pleasure, Bing. Thank you so much for hosting me. Yay! I am a huge fan of your work, and I've learned so much more about hormones, bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, um, gut health, so many really important topics from reading your material and reading your great book, Growing Younger. I am really grateful that you're here as a part of our hormone health series because this is such a topic that we as women just don't really get enough of. And I'm sure in your practice, you do so much education with your patients because I know for myself, the more I've learned about how my body works, the more of an ally I can be with my doctor and supporting the work that we're doing if I understand it. So as a patient educator, as well as a great physician, you have done a great job with this book and explaining the foundations. And I would imagine a lot of your patients, do you recommend that they read the book when they start working with you? Yeah. A lot of times people don't even know I wrote a book and then I tell them when they're interested in coming into my practice and working together, I suggest reading the book. And once they tend to read it from like front to back all in one day, and they call me so excited, they go, why can't we get started sooner? You know? And so it's, it's good because it puts them in a positive perspective to tackle our issues as women, instead of being intimidated and scared because the lack of information out there for us. Yes. And I feel like there's not a lot of information that like puts all the moving parts together. And it seems like that's really part of your life's work is to put these pieces together to create customized treatments that really serve the individual patient. I think that maybe like to get us started, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you and your practice and your life and you as a woman, because you are such a powerhouse in everything that you do. Will you share a little bit of your story and how you got so interested in women's hormone health? I'm sure. Great. I came to this country, my parents, and came here from India when I was about six. And so I learned English like much later as my third language. And it was so exciting to come to America because my parents, their whole dream is to come to America to, to give us opportunity. And when we came here, it was, it was really scary. And I was so infused with the Hindu culture, Ayurvedic medicine, natural healing. It was just a part of how my mom raised us with vegetables and eating like mother nature foods. So that was a background, but growing up, you know, we had a difficult family situation. My sister, and it took me a lot of self-therapy or therapy with professionals to get to this point where I had to realize that my sister, um, we grew up with a sister who at age 19 got a bipolar, very complicated mix with schizoaffective disorder. And um, my father, a renowned psychiatrist, did everything he can to get her the best care. And at that time, like we focused so much on medicine and medical well-being, medical care, and she did well. But it, as you know, a lot of us women that go through any, you know, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, it really depends on the medication. When you stop taking the medication, you decline rapidly. And so when we saw that happen with my sister after 9-11, it, it, it caused a, a severe relapse in her where she stopped taking medication. And it just it was devastating because we lost my sister to 
to suicide. And I think like what instigated me to change my direction in medicine, because I was in med school as chief resident, was I, I couldn't bear that the loss of my my sister, my best friend, our family being torn by, and we thought medicine was going to save her. And you know, it was then I realized, and it's really so hard for me to talk about this um, without looking, you know, positively. It, it, it helped me realize there's so much more to my sister than than just taking medication and feeling that illness. It's not about that. There's so much more. Like we didn't look at like nutrition and supplementation and mental well being and how she thought and. Um, there's just so much more to our being. And it was such a hit for me, not just because our family had this devastation and there was no one to blame. It's just to understand and learn to help people with that pain. And I think it was then that I realized that, um, oh gosh, life is so much, healing is so much more than a medication. It is like delving into someone and understanding where the pain is, where the trauma is where the nutrition is, where the lifestyle is, where the sleep is, the motherhood. And there's just so much that makes us as a human being that it, it opened me up to another level, not just med school, not just medicine, but every dimension holistically that helps us heal. So this, I gave you way more than you asked for, but it's a very deep, like for me, when I do functional medicine or healing with my patients, dealing with aging or dealing with depression, dealing with whatever we're dealing with, I really take it seriously because there's so many factors that determine how we heal. So so that's what that's what motivates me. That's what pushes me forward because I think about my sister and when I see someone in pain or angry or as they need love the most, they're usually the ones that are hurting the most. And it helps me have that courage to take on that patient to help them heal and help them look way beyond their symptom that's outside or just the lab value that I'm looking at. So yeah, it's, it's, um, it's a multidimensional way of looking at a human being. Wow. I am so truly grateful for your beautiful share because I think that those who are really called to heal others often have been on a deep healing journey of their own and the the depth and dimension in which you are able to bring to this service that you offer to people comes from such a personal place and that's part of why you see such great success i mean i have mutual friends who referred me to you and that's and they are thriving and that's why i know what a powerful healer you truly are through all of these multidimensional ways that you serve so thank you so much for sharing that i i know it will resonate with many of my listeners Truly, as women, you know, like you said, I mean, that we're so multidimensional. We have so many things going on inside of our bodies, and it takes a lot of awareness, I think, on the part of the practitioner and also deep care to really see true healing take place at the root level. And I understand where you're coming from on that so well. It's uh, really special to hear about that. I guess I'd like to ask you a little bit more about, would you educate us a little bit about our hormones? What are some of the things that, in a sort of synopsis, what should we know about how our, our women's hormones work and how should they be optimized? Okay, that's a great question, Brie. Um, You know, it's amazing. We as women, we start going through puberty and, and through, through that, like when we're actually in utero, all the way to our lifespan, we have hormonal changes that happen. And it's so wonderful if we as women can help each other understand this. So we as women go through changes, not just from puberty, because now you see so much of young women going through um, difficult periods and infertility issues. So but hormone imbalances can happen at any point in time during our lifespan. I deal with them throughout, you know, from teenagers all the way through postpartum, like just getting pregnant and then um, after pregnancies and then, you know, with period issues throughout our whole life, adult life, and then menopause, which is halfway through our life, right? And so then after menopause, like how do we enter the second half of our phase of our life, like still feeling, you know, excellent and having vitality and energy? So the way I explain that to a lot of um, women is I say, you know, we live the majority of our life with our hormones being maximized about 20 to 30 years old. 
And then about 35, we start losing hormones and sometimes earlier, depending on genetics. And between 35 and 50, we, we go through perimenopause and about 50s menopause when we lose all our hormones is a rapid decline. And that's like halfway through life. Lifespan now is, is almost 80 years old. So why should we leave, live our life like exempt of hormones, the last half of our life? That should be the best half of our life where we've learned so much from our experiences and, and you know, raised children. And I myself have three kids, little ones. And, you know, we've, we've gone through, you know, relationships and careers and deliver passion to the world. Why should we live the second half without hormones? So my philosophy for women is really positive. I believe in the neuroendocrine uh, theory of aging, which says, you know, we age because we lose hormones, not because we don't lose hormones because we age. So that's really positive. And we could all do things every day that could, at any age, that could balance our hormones better naturally. And it's up to us as women to put ourselves first and do self-care. And self-care, which I love about you, because that's what you do in <laughs> for all women, is, is self-care has to be first. Because when we feel great, when we take care of ourselves, we can help the masses and raise stronger children and help you know our relationships thrive. That is really hitting the nail on the head. And I love that. You know, as a doctor, you are talking about the natural ways to heal. And I'm so glad you touched on the neuroendocrine system because you are, I read that in your book and I was like, oh, I hope she talks about this because I love the statement you just made about, you know, we don't age because, you know, how, because of why we age, because we, our hormones, we lose our hormones, but we can in natural ways restore them. And then also with practitioners like yourself, we can also get a little help along the way, of course. So you talked about why we age. What are some of the signs that a woman has that something isn't right with her hormones? And what should she do to like find out more if she sees something like that? Hormones encapsulate so many, like thyroid, stress hormones, um, sex hormones, which are estrogen, progesterone. So we have so many hormones in our body. So I'm going to focus on more like middle, midlife hormones, just because I think that's the one that we neglect the most, you know? So midlife, we start noticing like probably the earliest 35 years old, like, or even after we have children, we start noticing that it's harder to sleep. We start noticing that when we do sleep, you wake up a couple times a night and you still wake up tired. And even though you exercise and you're eating right, you start getting weight around your waistline. And instead of having that curvature, you start becoming more square. You know, and that's really challenging for a lot of women who eat right and exercise. Like, why am I getting more fat in my arms and in my cellulite, in my belly fat, in my butt, in my thighs? Like, places where you don't see fat collecting, it comes so much more easy. We start seeing skin sag and we get more brain fog. And, and the difficult, the most difficult thing is women that, that are really logical start thinking like more irrational. Like, we start becoming more emotional instead of logical when we deal with things and it's hardest to cope emotionally and let even emotionally become more erratic and um i think like the way we act to problem solving becomes emotional instead of logical so we're losing our cognitive thinking and it's all subtle things that are happening and then by the time we realize that oh my gosh like how did this happen that i don't have a sex drive i don't i you know i have hot flashes which are like some of the most obvious ones or it hurts to have sex and I'm getting UTIs every time I have sex or, you know, um, vaginal dryness, my hair shedding, my skin just does not feel as soft. And every time I drink water, I still don't feel like it hydrates me. Mm -hmm. So all these things have to do with estrogen, estrogen being depleted from our mm -hmm. system, like our ovaries not making it anymore. And it coming from different sources now. So when we're young, we make estrogen from our ovaries. As we age and we go through menopause, we start making estrogen from the body, such as fat cells. And sometimes our adrenals kicks out estrogen. But it's that's why it's so important. Like I try to explain to all my women um, that weight, our weight, how well we manage our weight is so important to manage our estrogen. If you want to do it on your own, like without having to see a physician for this to prescribe estrogen. Wow. So 
I mean, of course it makes sense because as we shift away from um, menstruating every month and ovulating every month, of course, we're going to, our hormones are going to shift and change. And what then do women do? Like, what are, what are some of the solutions naturally first? And then what would they do to come to a good physician? What, what would the treatments be? So first, let's start off with what you could do on your own. Right. Because it's a really good question. I love encouraging people to do things their own. That's why I wrote the book because I want people to understand you could do this on your own, even if you can't find like a really good functional medicine doctor near you, by you. So one of the best things you could do is start off eating properly. Nutrition, like Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine, my medicine be thy food. It's so important because plant-based foods, such as like lentils or organic soy fermented foods, these all have phytoestrogens, which means plant estrogens. So in Europe, a lot of women don't have menopause as bad as we do in the Western culture because we eat more carbohydrates instead of plant-based foods. If you eat more plant-based foods along with you know the Mediterranean diet type, if you eat more plant-based foods, you're getting a lot more natural estrogen in your body, which is excellent. So that's one. Two, I, I always encourage women to work out four to five times a week. And I'm not talking like hardcore. I mean, moderate exercise, which means going for a 30-minute walk every day or doing yoga, stretching, whatever it is, appeals to you. Like, you have to enjoy it. It can't produce stress because then you're making cortisol instead of making estrogen. So, and I'll go back to that later because the only hormone we make as we age is actually cortisol. We lose everything else, like the good stuff. And cortisol is like the evil hormone that like keeps us like, even though we work out, we keep the belly fat. So, so the more you enjoy what you do, the more you make good hormones. And then gut health is so important. To me, my essence of my medicine is gut health. And the reason why, because we've proven now that, that, you know, depression, anxiety, ADHD, a lot of like neurological symptoms like uh, that come later in life, like Alzheimer's, it's all connected to gut health. So what that means is our immune system, 80 to 90% is all in its small intestine, Peyer's, it's called Peyer's patch, which is, so if you have a healthy gut, then you absorb your nutrients and you have a great immune system, you release serotonin, which is a happy hormone, and you could sleep better and you could exercise and be happier. Estrogen, when we're younger, actually heals the gut health. So if we eat more plant-based foods, cut out simple carbs, please, please cut out simple carbs and sugars and dairy as much as possible, our gut health improves. And I tell people, another thing is fasting. Fasting is so important. Like, you don't have to do intermittent fasting because I know a lot of people hear about that. But even eating three-fourths of your plate instead of your entire plate, you know, makes a big difference because that's called calorie restriction. So the less you eat, the more your body picks up its own pace, burns fat, and creates your own healthy estrogens and hormones. So eating less is a good thing. Um, and, you know, when we exercise, we sleep better. And that also fixes gut health. There's so many things that, um, but I'm also big on supplementation, Brie. Tell us yeah. more about supplements that you recommend. Baseline supplements that most women should should be on, unless, you know, their doctor advises them against it, is number one, I always recommend vitamin D. Vitamin D is a pro-hormone. So what that means is vitamin D is made from cholesterol. And when we have an adequate amount of vitamin D, D3, in our body, then we make our own hormones. So it helps us produce more hormones. And not only that, vitamin D deficiency is linked to depression, anxiety, poor gut health, Alzheimer's, insulin resistance, heart disease, breast cancer, colon cancer, everything. So, you know, if your doctor hasn't checked your vitamin D3 levels, then please ask them to. And if not, then take at least, you know, I recommend between 4,000 IUs and higher, but I would start off low if most people aren't used to taking it. And um, sadly, you know, the recommended dose, I think, is like 600, like, and that's so low. But women who have adequate amount of vitamin D feel better, they have more energy, and they'll, they'll be immediately improving their immune system. I think that's so cool that you just talked about that. And like my cardiologist actually recommended that I download this vitamin D app that tells me when the sun is going to be out more often because I too have been deficient in vitamin D. And I've been working on, I use both a D, vitamin D liposomal supplement and I get sun exposure as often as 
possible in small doses to make sure that I'm really boosting that because like you said, it's so important and it's a pro hormone. So I'm so glad you talked about that. Tell us more. Okay. And you know what, Like when you work out outside like to get sun, you should be outside at least 30 to 40 minutes and not wear sunblock because right. sunblock prevents vitamin D absorption. And also as we age, the reason why I recommend supplementation is because our skin has to absorb it and it doesn't, or we don't always process vitamin D in our body the way we did when we were younger. Right. And if we don't have good gut health, we don't even, produce, you know, we don't in kidney health. So I recommend just supplementation, like you're doing liposomal, but don't take aggressive levels of any, or anything. It's really important. You know, if you do a little bit every day, you bank your health, you, you right. profoundly change things. So just be consistent. Number two, I love curcumin. You know, in India, we have curry and curry is generally a lot of like turmeric. Mm. And turmeric has been one of both vitamin D and turmeric. What they do is they turn on these genes in our body. And, it, and it's called um, these genes that kill off cancer cells. And um, when you have our own body, it's about strong military. Our military. The NK cells, right? Are they the, the, the natural, yes. ki- natural killer cells? Yeah. Yes. It's called autoph- autophagy, which means our cells kill bad cells and replace them with healthy cells. So curcumin does that too. And it causes a blood brain barrier, which means that it cleans the brain of, you know, plaques and, and it increases her blood perfusion. So, and decreases inflammation. So both of these are strong, excellent antioxidants. And curcumin is one of the few supplements that actually prevent cancer and prevent like the growth of cancer. So, and it's really excellent also for preventing depression waking insulin resistance. Next one that I absolutely encourage, you know, everyone to take is a good probiotic. Probiotics, you can eat probiotics, which is, you know, um, yogurt, organic yogurt, fat, you know, it should be full fat. And I'm a big proponent of fat diets. Like Me too. You know, the, <laughs> well, I know you yeah, are. No, yeah. no, I'm so, this, and it's funny that you just talked about yogurt because one of my biggest issues at the grocery store is that it's so hard to find a all- natural Greek yogurt that's full yep. fat, full that's, fat. That doesn't mm-hmm. have sugar added to it. And there's just, it's very infrequent that you can actually yeah. find this, but it's worth looking for, like you said, yeah. because you know, that fat is part of what helps the protein oh. work. To, they all work Absolutely. together in your body and so important. Yeah. So please continue. Sorry. I just love well, that you I'm, talked no, about no, the no, yogurt. I'm, yeah. And I'm glad that you're big on the, the fat thing because so many people are afraid of fat, but we as women need the healthy fats. Yes. You remember we talked about D being a, made out of cholesterol. All hormones are made out of cholesterol. That's the backbone. So we want good fats. Not right. Bad and fats and all of those, all of those plants that you talked about that we want to eat in balance, they have vitamins in them that are fat soluble, right? Yes. So we need to have yeah. those healthy fats in our system in order to really take advantage of those amazing vitamins from our foods yes. and plant-based foods. Yes. Yes. And and the brain is all fat. What people don't realize is like, how do we prevent a brain from getting Alzheimer's or dementia is one estrogen is proven to prevent dementia. That's why we see Alzheimer's in the elderly population or any kind of neurologic. You know, when we see autoimmune disease, it sets in midlife. There's a reason for that. That's when we see the diminishing effects of estrogen, which is neuroprotective and cardioprotective. So going back to the healthy fats, so good fats are like avocados, nuts, you know, raw nuts, excellent amounts of fish, like really good quality, uh, you know, I'm talking about like not farm raised, you know. Right. Wild caught fish. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big proponent of eggs, you know, eating grass fed eggs. Um, But I I think like eating nuts is like one of the best things women can do for themselves and avocados and olives. So when you eat high, good quality fats, like ghee, even ghee is an Indian kind of, yeah, it's so good. And And seeds, lots of seeds. seeds. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Seeds are so good for the brain. Walnuts. And that's why when people eat lots of good fats, they preserve their brain health. And so it's so important. So I always tell people like eat the nuts because it's sort of like getting a probiotic in you too. So probiotics. And then, um, you know, I do a lot of like regenerative medicine. How do you recycle your cells? How do you regenerate cells? So um, I'm low. I always encourage people to do less sugars just, just because you prevent autoimmune diseases and dairy prevents autoimmune diseases. So um, I'm trying to think, oh, I love DIM. You know, DIM for women prevents breast cancer. It prevents the bad estrogen. So I know you did um, an educational series where you talked about E1, E2, and E3, like estrogens, the three types of estrogens. Right. E1 is connected to cancer. 
E2 and E3 we make when we're pregnant or when we're young and E3 is extremely strong antioxidant. Mm. So E2 and E3 are antioxidants. They're cardioprotective and neuroprotective. So what happens is when we break down estrogen in our body, there's a, there's a pathway. And if we can break down estrogen from E1 to E2, which is healthier because E1 causes more cancers, which is hydroxy, estrone, Four, which is the most dangerous. And I don't want to, I want to stay really simple so people can understand. So when we release estrogen from our ovaries, it tends to be healthy estrogen. When we release it from our fat cells, it's dangerous estrogen, the E1 that's connected to obesity, connected to breast cancer and any cancer in men as well, if it's high levels. Now the thing about like when we eat phytoestrogens, those are healthy estrogens. When we get xenoestrogens are estrogens from toxins such as plastics, chemicals from hairsprays or shampoos or anything that's like in our society now, environment, like GMOs. Those are all plastics, you know, bisphosphonates. Those are all bad estrogens. They get stored in fat cells. And then fat cells create high levels of estrogens that are dangerous. So if you take DIM, which is very popular now. You can find it if you just Google capital D, capital I, capital M. You'll find that it's really excellent. And please try to get it from you know a more a pharmaceutical based kind of medical based kind of um, those are called nutraceuticals um, company. And so um, and I don't want to throw any out there because I work with so many companies. I don't want to endorse sure. one company. But so DIM, what it does is it converts the bad estrogens, xenoestrogens in our body that are, you know, toxic estrogens to the healthy estrogen that we could get rid of in our body. And it prevents breast cancer in women and actually prostate cancer in men. Now, I understand that your body can make DIM naturally when you eat more cruciferous vegetables. Yes. Is that correct? Yes. So that's, that's exactly so we can, we can all start doing more of that, even, you know, as well as, like you said, with vitamin D, like all of these things can be done when we become a little bit more mindful and intentional <laughs> with our diet, right? right. But, but we all of us, I mean, I'm a busy woman, you're a busy mom, you, we, we have busy lives. It's nice to also have the backup of the supplements, right? Because oh then, then you've got your bases covered. Yeah. And like yeah. you said, when you're taking this small amount daily, this gives mm -hmm. you that protective overall benefit. So I, I love that you're bringing yeah, that to life. That's what Dim is. You said it, like I should have said that. Because you know, I am used to saying these, so I forget a lot of people don't know where it comes from. Dim comes from all vegetables, cruciferous vegetables, like eating broccoli. Broccoli sprouts are so healthy. That's like the right. strongest source of dim. Cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. I mean, what I encourage my patients the most, and even you know, my kids and myself, you know, my husband, we we you have to live this lifestyle. You have to enjoy it. It's our responsibility. If you want good health, you've got to earn it. Just like mm. You want to earn a car, you want to earn a house, you want to earn, you know, anything in life that's good does not come easy. And it's okay. Just take your time doing your best to change a little bit at a time. Yep. And I, I post, I actually posted this Rory Vaden quote just today that I, I said, success is never owned. It is rented and the rent <laughs> is due every day. Right. Like you said, because it's, it's like, you don't just, you don't just reach the pinnacle and then you're done. It's like an ongoing process that you must chip away at. So the rent is due every day in yeah. your success. And that's what we're doing every day with these principles. It's a lifestyle. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's a really good analogy. You touched a little bit on aging, and I know you mentioned also that you do some regenerative medicine, I, and we're going to talk more about some of these things that you do. But I, one thing that I think people hear a lot about their telomeres. Did I say it right? Is it telomeres? Yeah, or tel yeah telomeres, telomeres. You know, it's right. We, we hear a lot about telomeres, and my understanding is they are the end cap of our, of our chromosomes, of our DNA. But tell us more about like why they're so important and your work in regenerative medicine and anti-aging. It's very exciting. The future of medicine is so exciting because it, it gives us a lot more accountability for what we can do for ourselves instead of like saying, oh, you have to take this drug and be um, dependent on something outside of us. Right. So, okay. So telomeres, we all are born with a set of genes. And the exciting thing is now that was set, the CDC came out with this study that only five to 10% of cancers 
are genetically important. That means that, believe it or not, like 80 to 90 percent of cancers are derived from our behavior. Oh my gosh. And that's so scary, yeah. too, at the same time yeah. as it's exciting. It's also very scary. It is, but it gives us a chance to change every day. Right. And a month can make a big difference. You know? Right. So, going back to telomeres. So, telomeres, okay, so DNA is the code of our genes. So, in the study of you know, epigenetics means you have your genes and this is what you do every day, whether you smoke or whether you party hard and drink too much, which breaks down chromosomes and telomeres and causes poor health. Or you can say, you know what, that's a good part of my life. I'm going to get over that. And I'm going to start eating vegetables and start working out a little bit. And I'm going to clean up some of my diet, eat more clean, good foods instead of drinking so much alcohol. So when you do that, your telomeres start going back. Because when you do bad things, they, they, they start shrinking and your chromosomes grow in length. So some of the things that we can do naturally every day um, is first fix your hormones, which means eat more plant-based foods, drink more water, sleep better, forgive, be happy, try to see the bright side of things. These things really make a big difference, believe it or not. And people who are more intentional with doing that, make an effort, it pays off. So what happens is those things extend telomeres. The stress shrinks them. Cortisol shrinks them. Then another thing that extends telomeres is exercise. We've proven now through studies, people who do cardiovascular exercise that exercise 150 minutes, which is about 20 minutes a day. You know, it doesn't have to be strenuous. That also fixes gut health and extends telomere lengths, which is phenomenal because you don't have to take a pill for that. You know, this right. is within your reach. And then another thing that extends telomeres is um, we have supplementation that you could take. It's called NAD. Which NAD, I yes. NAD, liposomal NAD is the best. And it's really hard to find stuff right now because everybody's coming out with one. Dr. David Sinclair, whom I love, one of my, you know, I love reading his books and he's just brilliant. I got to, I was blessed to be in that lecture with him. He's, he's the professor from Harvard that came out with a lot of studies on NAD and resveratrol. Both of those supplements are excellent. Like I use them heavily in my practice, which, you know, resveratrol is the same way of lengthening your telomeres or what we call sirtuins, which are also longevity genes. So when you eat less food, you extend your telomere length because your body has to use its own resources to burn energy and make ATP. So this is a really lengthy answer, but I want people to understand that it's so important that as we age, we actually eat less and we're more particular about how we eat. Get a smaller dish and eat from a smaller plate. Too. And eat more nutrient dense foods, I think yes. is what I hear you saying. And, and I mean, I don't, I don't want anyone here to feel like Dr. Rocco is trying to tell you to starve yourself. You know, we want, you to, feel, no, no, no. We want you to feel satisfied and full. I think what we're saying is yes. don't eat the typical American diet and be eating these huge American sized portions, right? Be, be very mindful that you're filling your plate with nutrient dense foods right. that are natural, low in sugar, like you're saying. Yes. Yeah. But there's so, you know, when people ask me like, gosh, how do you like what to explain? Like what I mean is like halibut with or salmon or like, you know, with salad with tons of arugula and, you know, even eating like eggs for breakfast and omelet with asparagus and peppers, eating Eating, there's so many choices that's created by Mother Nature and yep. not man. So eat, I always say eat Mother Nature foods, God made foods, yep. not man made foods. You know, so that tends to be easier for people. Like you know, eating eating chicken, eating a steak that's grass fed, that's way different than eating you know French fries and um, you know cheeseburger with dairy and bread. You know, we're speaking the same language. This is everything I teach: is eat a whole food based you know intake and be that. And that what that does is it allows you to listen to the signals your body is sending you. You can tell when you're hungry. You can tell when you're full because yeah. our body feels satiated when it achieves nutrient density and, and lots of good fats. In there. Lots of good fats, yeah. right? That's a very yeah. It's a great yeah. way to have a smaller plate, right? Because you're going to feel more full and satisfied from those healthy fats. So I love what you're saying and how much that relates to our health and longevity. It's such a big deal. And I feel like we as women, especially when we're pregnant, I remember like everyone says, oh, eat when you're hungry, eat, eat, feed the baby. No, no, no. You should eat, not all the time, only when you're hungry. You should right. eat when you have that urgency to eat because you're, you, wait till you feel hunger, wait till you right. feel pains, those starvation pains, because that means you're burning your calories and your mitochondria right. are working. And I love mitochondria. That's a key word that every woman needs to know. Mitochondria generate energy for us. They burn fat. 
they preserve our life. Because when you wake up in the morning and rise and shine, you know, start your day, mitochondria is what gives you all that pep. And feeding your mitochondria is so important. So that's what NAD does. And I would just recommend getting a supplement, you know, along with the other supplements. You can't just take um, one and think it's the end all be all because we have such a complex body and system yes. and hormones. So I, I advise, even if you don't like to take so many supplements, rotate them. A little bit of something good is better than nothing, you know? Mm. So, um, and sleep, sleep and orgasms are so important. Women are do not like to talk about sometimes publicly about you know some of those important emotions that we need to have, and those are all free. Those are all that we are all capable of receiving a, like a huge shot of endorphins every day. So don't minimize what's naturally in our system. You I know? love that you. I love that you bring that out, and it's it's so important because it's it's like your body is such a gift, and it comes to you complete with all of the things that are needed for healing and mm -hmm. to thrive. And in the world we live in today, we're not living in a natural way always, but there are ways to tune back into yourself to live in more natural rhythms. Say with the say with the sun and the and the light and the dark cycle, for example, like getting to bed earlier, yeah. paying attention to your natural physical desires, making sure that you're using these self-healing mechanisms in your own body. Um, and then of course, using the brilliant information from our phenomenal physicians like Dr. Rocco to support you in this journey. We all need healers. I feel that every time in human history, there've been healers around, right? Of all different kinds. And, and we need yeah. them today just as much, if not more than ever. So I, I don't mind. I love a long answer. I'm so grateful that you talked and explained, you explained so many important things about telomeres, I think just giving us a, a sort of a big picture of why that's important to know about and the fact that our mitochondria are something we should all have in our vernacular. Super, super important. I just want to touch back on this concept of we need individualized treatment. And in your practice, you really specialize in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. Is that correct? Yeah, actually, that's predominantly what I do. I don't think everyone's a candidate for it. You know, I don't have that philosophy because I see a lot of adolescents, you know, where I teach them how to eat properly, um, which makes a huge balance at such a young age, a tremendous. Yeah. They have polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS, or my women that come in because they can't get pregnant. They're in their early 20s and 30s, and they're like, how can this happen? You know, so it a lot of it has to do with nutrition. So it's education. It's empowering the, us as women to know that once we learn something about our body, that we can change it and we can yes. do it, you know? And we all have to teach each other. We all have to empower each other. I love women. I, I feel like I have so much to learn. I love learning from people. And I love when my patients teach their family or people that they love because that's what we do. We need to serve and we need to love. And the more we spread knowledge, the more we help people and we feel better. Oh my gosh. Yes. And that's why I was so glad you were coming on the show today, because this is exactly who we're reaching today. All of you who are listening and who you're going to talk to about these topics, who you're going to share this information with. We so appreciate you, you know, just the, the knowledge that you take into yourself and that you're able to help your friends, help your kids, like just with this information and the way that you're living your life. It's so important to both Dr. Rocco and myself. So thank you again for being here and listening to this, because this is part of what matters to both of us so, so much. And what are sort of, would you explain what bioidentical hormones actually are? Sure. I, so, so bioidentical hormones are, okay, so hormones, there's two ways to replace them. Actually three, you could do it through dietary and exercise and sleep and work on that. And then if that's not as successful and you still have symptoms as such as hot flashes or vaginal dryness, weight gain, not sleeping well, lack of sex drive, a lot of these things are way harder to fix without supplementation. So there's two ways to replace hormones for us. So I'm going to talk about estrogen predominantly. So estrogen is their synthetic estrogens, which is like typical hormone replacement to therapy, HRT. And then there's natural way that's not put out by the drug industry, big pharma. So there's two ways, natural and synthetic. And it's in bidental hormones are usually customized for the patient, compounded in a, in a pharmacy. So it's not like a one size fits all medicine. And um, 
it's very common now. In fact, a third of most of the women who take hormones get them naturally. So it's very well versed. There's a lot of physicians that prescribe this, a lot of naturopaths. So it's really important that if you're interested in some of this, that you research it in your local area. So when you prescribe bioidentical hormones, you still need to get it as a prescription because in our country, it's considered an FDA, um, not an FDA, I'm sorry, DEA monitored prescription because it's not, it's, it's something that a doctor has to know how to dose. So for me, I'm going to talk about my, my dosing. I like to individually dose each patient based on what they have in their body at the time that we test them, what their symptoms are. Now, some physicians like to just dose it by symptoms. I like digits. I want to see improvement. I want to see what, what more can I do for my patient or am I doing too much, you know? So I like to see improvements in numbers. So that's me personally, but not everyone works like that. I remember from some of our conversations previously, um, you've, you're a big advocate of testing really regularly because you want to see that data because the body's dynamic and it's going to change. Yeah. It's going to respond to a treatment. And so you want to be constantly adjusting it because you are so, you so want to tailor it just to exactly your yeah. patient's needs, right? Yeah. And we want to give physiological doses that are healthy, not too much. Not, so I believe in optimum, which means, you know, depending on your season, depending, like for instance, we're going through COVID right now. So we might need more estrogen to help cope with anxiety and depression and sleep. And maybe we don't get COVID, but maybe we get more heart racing because we're nervous and we have to get our kids through this or we have to deal with like, you know, remote teaching and learning all that, like I have to do with my three kids. So, you know, so it, so what that means is when you test a patient, you can say, hey, you know what? We're not giving enough for this patient this, this quarter or this month. So I raise it. So you see, estrogen in our body is pulsed, is released with pulsated method. That's how Mother Nature releases it in our body. So when you prescribe it, you want to give it such as such that that woman needs that much to function at her best. Mm-hmm. So when I say I customize it, I look at the individual, like what their demands are for their brain, their energy, their workouts. So it, it really does have to be custom, but you don't have to do it that to that level because we can create estrogen in our own body if we exercise more. So one of my fundamental rules for my patients is if they're not used to exercising, I tell them, you know, to be a part of my <laughs> patient pool, to be work together as a team, you got to eat better. You got to exercise and you got to prioritize yourself. So you can heal for you and your family, you know? So I love women doing things for themselves. You know, I feel like for me personally, if I don't do it, I can't encourage my patients to do it. And I can't be a good example for my children. And I can't be a good voice in my community, you know? So how dare I ask someone else to do it if I don't do it, right? It's just common sense. I don't ask something for my patients that I myself wouldn't do. So I I love this sort of, um, it's a very two tier, it's like a very two way street in your practice, right? You're, you're going to work with the patient. You're going to look at their data, but you're also asking them to do in what the Betty Rocker universe, what we call the four pillars of health, right? Which are sleep, nutrition, stress management, and exercise. And this all comes down to self-care and Mm -hmm. every great doctor who I've had the great opportunity to speak to has t- said really similar things about like, look, I want to take care of my patients, but the patient has to take responsibility also for their self-care because that's what's going to speed up the treatment. That's mm-hmm. what's going to make it actually last longer. And because we want to create a lifestyle of health for people that that's long-term. It's not just this quick fix, right? It's not just, we're, tr- we're not just treating symptoms. You know, this is the hallmark of functional medicine. It's like, let's go to the root cause. Let's address lifestyle. Let's address diet. Let's look at all of these important factors to help you really thrive and live your best life. And I love this option for women because I think a lot of women aren't even aware that this is an option that they could explore is this um, help with bioidentical hormones. And you've really so explained it so beautifully. What else did you want to say about that? Well, you know, one of the things that when I was in med school and, and I was coming out of med school, I got introduced to this pretty quickly because I did a women's health fellowship. And One of the negative things that came out really early on um, in 2002 was a women's health initiative study. And it showed, because back then, a lot of women were taking conventional hormone replacement, which means HRT, which means estrogen that came from Premarin, which is a a horse injected with hormones. I've heard of this. Yeah. yeah, So it's it's derived from a horse's urine, Premarin. So we were giving, you know, it was women were given estrogen in high doses along with 
progesterone. Those were drug, um, those were FDA approved doses. So when I came into medicine and I graduated, I wanted to do anything but that because I saw the high level of breast cancer associated with it. Now, in all fairness, that study, if women just took the estrogen alone, they didn't have a higher risk of breast cancer. It was a very small and significant risk. What made the risk so high was, was the synthetic progesterone. And synthetic progesterone, progestin, what happened was that increased the breast cancer threefold. Uh, two to three fold in these women that took the synthetic estrogens and progesterone. We see that with the pill, right? With synthetic hormones from yeah. the pill. The progestin I, is what causes the higher incidence progest- of breast cancer. Yeah. Right. So now since then, we've come so far. And when you use plant-based, which is what bioidentical hormones are, plant-based, they have a very short half-life. They have very low risk factors and side effects because one, they're plant-based. Two, They bind to the same receptors that we have receptors for estrogen and progesterone innately. Those, these plant-based compounds bind to the same receptors. So they actually have a binding site, a docking site. So they're not creating um, havoc in our body, like in the liver and the kidneys and the brain, like synthetic hormones would. So they're a lot safer. They're a lot easier to manipulate in the sense that we could change them. They're not stored in our body for six months. To four right. Months. You said they have a half-life. That's right, important. Right, half-life. So we can change the dosing and we could alter them. And the, and the best part is that when we take these hormones, like, they actually benefit just as well as the same hormones that we were born with, like estrogen and progesterone. So what that means is when we go through menopause, our biggest risk of women is actually heart disease. And I don't know if women know that, like the number one killer in us women is heart disease. Um, heart disease kills more people than COVID has already every year in a woman. So it's really tragic, over 300,000 deaths, you know? So how do we prevent that is right when we go through perimenopause, which is around 35 to 50, if the younger we start, the younger we start a woman on natural estrogens or eating more plant-based diet and getting estrogens through, you know, proper exercise or supplementation with DIM, the sooner we prevent heart disease from setting in. Estrogen naturally reduces cholesterol, improves insulin resistance, help you burn fat, helps grow good skin, gives you, you know, excellent brain clarity. So when we start losing it, we get all the opposite effects. Right. So when we put it back in naturally, and I love topical use, which means we're not taking it orally, we're taking it topically, which is a, it's like a cream mm-hmm. that absorbs high and really quickly into your skin. Estrogen works phenomenal. And it's and you want to start with low dose that's appropriate for the patient. The biggest thing that's overlooked in a lot of practices is that a lot of physicians don't don't practice estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. A cortisol, you have to look at everything. Thyroid. Right. So it is a, you know, I love how you put it at symphony because that's exactly how we learn that it is. It's a symphony in our body. And I call it a team player. Yeah. Estrogen is a team player. It's the captain. Everything has to work as a team. If it doesn't, you can't just prescribe one hormone and ignore all the others. That's not how God made us. It's not how our bodies work. It is a complex web. And it's all connect it to the other hormone. Mm. So it's so important that you give the proper ratio of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone and look at cortisol levels, look at thyroid levels, look at, and it's all connected. So it's very intricate and it's so beautiful to test the patient and see where the baseline is and explain sure. to someone, okay, you're not going crazy. <laughs> you don't have a lot We can reverse it. You don't need an antidepressant, you know, because a lot of women who went through their majority of their life coping well and then are told to take an antidepressant because they're going crazy or take a, you know, pill because they're having heart palpitations. It's all, it's all because there's lack of hormones now. And if we put them back gently and physiologically appropriate for each patient, like we go back in time. That's why I love saying, oh my gosh, we're going to grow younger because you don't, you could slowly teach a patient to change their bad habits into good habits. Right. And then put, you implement a little bit of hormones in and what a difference it makes in their sex drive. Or um, Because sex drive is one thing that women come in all the time. They're like, you know, death drive, I don't know what it is, but I've had such a healthy relationship. And now I just don't even think about it. I, and I don't, it doesn't even cross my mind. What's wrong with me? You know? And I tell them it's because, you know, one, you're prioritizing probably everybody else before you. And you're right, right. And, and we're all guilty of that. And then number two, 
I don't think women realize that estrogen ratio with testosterone is critical for, you know, a great sex drive. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with you. It's just what happens is we lose right. the hormones is there's an imbalance. So all these can be restored, you know, and one of the best ways you can probably, you know, there's a term I know a lot of women probably would love to hear about. It's called estrogen dominance. Yes. What happens is as we age, women start um, not, you know, all of us women have a propensity to gain weight. So what happens is when we gain more weight and we release more estrogen from fat cells, then we create more estrogen dominance and there's less estrogen produced from the ovaries, but there's a higher amount coming from fat cells. And then there's also lower amounts of progesterone coming from the ovaries. So estrogen dominates because there's less progesterone in the future. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. So we have to balance the ratio of progesterone mm -hmm. to estrogen. And that's not easy to do. And it takes some trial and error with each person. But the way you can fix that at home is eat more yams, wild yams. They're so good for us. In, in a lot of Latino countries, they love yams because it's that progesterone that calms us and gives us energy and, and kind of balances that high level of estrogen. So if you exercise and you eat less bad foods that are fat-based, like especially animal fats that are not healthy, but if you eat the clean animal fats, that would benefit. If you eat good plant-based foods and you cut down on, cut out dairy. I always tell my patients, cut out dairy when we have to lose weight and um, increase the vegetable intake in yams. That helps naturally balance it as well. Now, testosterone is way more challenging. We make testosterone when we're young and we make it from the ovaries. And what happens is over time, because there's no more estrogen and progesterone in the house released from the ovaries, we still make testosterone when we weight work out. And testosterone is so critical to balance too with estrogen because testosterone and estrogen give us our brain confidence and give us our brain cognitive thinking, decreased brain fog, gives us a great sex drive, gives us like that confidence and, and lifts skin and naturally lifts our breasts, naturally lifts, you know, it's like a natural facelift when your hormones are balanced and you work right. out. Yeah. So it, it's really, there's so much to talk about with hormones because they all work together. They are all connected. So you don't want to give, you know, the answer isn't one hormone because a lot of people ask me, can I just take something to fix my cortisol, like some adrenal stuff? And I'm like, no, there's no simple answer to that. If you need to fix how you're thinking, you know, you need to release thoughts, be more intentional, how you eat, how you drink, you know, alcohol. Wow. Alcohol. We're seeing people drinking three times more right now during COVID because of stress and alcohol. If there's one thing I can tell women out there other than eat more plant-based foods and, and work out like 20 minutes a day, it would be um, please get down on alcohol. Alcohol is so connected to bad estrogens being released in our body. Um, estrogen is a, is a positive, it's a lifter. It lifts up our, 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 our fat or affect or how we feel our mood and alcohol suppresses it. It's, it's a depressant. It's a strong chemical, and there's a higher risk of breast cancer when women drink every night. Resveratrol, which is a hormone that's excellent for longevity, is made from grapeseed extracts and made from, you know, wine. They say red wine, but that's four ounces, not a whole bottle. Right. <laughs> so I always ask people like, "How much do you drink?" And they're like, "Oh, just a couple glasses a night." And I ask them why, and they're like, "Well, I can't sleep if I don't drink the alcohol." And then I remind them that. You know, you're not going to burn those calories, love. You know, you're not. You're going to wake up feeling exhausted and tired. And so, you know, we got to look at what, what are we doing to contribute, you know, to our wellness every day, and what are we doing to destroy it? And we got to break it down. And I always have confidence that people can be better, but it, they, it, we can only be better if we want to be. You know, we can only be better by by knowing and having awareness of what the things that we can do to, to do better and what things are, are damaging us. And I think you are giving us such solid tips and information right now. So I, I so appreciate that. I wondered if there's anything that we haven't talked about yet that you would like to mention before we go. I always like to give my guests the last word. Is there anything else that you want to any message that you want to give these listeners, anything else you'd like to tell them? Um, you know, I feel so blessed to be a woman. Like sometimes, you know, we, we always say like, oh, we go through periods and we go through all these hormonal changes and oh, we go through issues with our hair and skin and acne and hot flashes and weight fluctuations. You know, um, 
we are so blessed because I feel like, you know, we perpetuate so much love. And, and if there were more leaders in our world that were women, more women um, supporting women and, and helping women, that's how we heal each other. I feel like as women, we're the, we are amazing caretakers. You know, we love our families and we have to give ourselves that same love. I think if I had to say one thing, it's, you know, I, I don't think self-love is selfish. I think self-love is the best love you can give your family. Ultimately, is when you take, when you feel well, when you feel good, it's contagious. It's contagious to your family, to the people around you, who you work with, your children, and you give out good vibrations. And you have to like live in that wellness thinking and, and know that we're all capable of change. You know, we are, even when you go, we go through these difficult times and hard times, because I, I do sympathize for so many people right now going through difficulties with trying to be better. I tell people, do one thing a day. Don't do 10. You know what? Wake up in the morning, write down one thing you want to be better at and do it. And do it again and again and again until it becomes a habit. And then pick a new one. And that's how you do it. Don't, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. And, and you know, that's it. I, I think that we're all so capable of being better and being our best. Mm. Oh, such good, wonderful, beautiful advice and such an uplifting framework for all of us that is just so important to hear. And remember that you can get a lot of information about things that Dr. Rocco spoke about today in her amazing book, Growing Younger, Restore Your Hormones, Energy and Sex Drive. And we'll be linking to her book in the show notes as well as her website so that you can find out more about her and connect with her if you would like to. Dr. Rocco, thank you again so much for being a guest on the show. It's just been such a pleasure to get to talk to you today. Oh, thank you for having me, Bree. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. And thank you. I adore you. And I love your messaging to all the women out there. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. And thank you so much for listening. I look forward to your questions and comments. Remember to visit the show notes page over on thebettyrocker.com backslash podcast for more links to Dr. Rocco's work. And you can leave your questions and comments there as well. Coming up next week, we're going to talk more in depth about the impact of stress as it relates to our hormone health with my good friend, the amazing Dr. Marisa Snyder. Dr. Marisa is a functional practitioner, women's health expert, expert and the author of seven books, including the number one national best-selling book, The Essential Oils Hormone Solution, which you have probably heard me mention before. I have so much respect for her work, and I'm so excited to share this conversation with you. Till then, I'm Betty Rocker, and you are so awesome and amazing. I'll talk to you again real soon. This podcast is for information purposes only. Statements and views expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Brie Argett Singer, Betty Rocker Inc. and the producers disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. Before starting a new exercise, fitness or health protocol, or if you think you have a medical problem, always consult a licensed physician.